Can you talk about how the outer journey and the inner journey are combined within this six plot structure? Yeah. I mean, they definitely intertwine. Again, as I said earlier, you can have a story that's all outer journey. It's just plot. It's the character doing whatever physically is needed to achieve that visible goal. And there's enough conflict from the visible obstacles from nature and other characters that we don't need to go deeper in the character. But if you choose as a writer to go to that inner journey level, to explore the inner conflict within the hero, to see the tug of war between identity and essence, between living a false persona and living a character's truth, and uh, living in a fearful state but protected state versus living courageously. If you want to explore that, then they'll intertwine because, as I said, the rule is the closer they get to achieving the goal, they, the more they have to be moving toward their essence. It's, it's called an arc because it arcs over the whole story. And every time their fear takes over, they have to lose ground, so to speak. It keeps them from achieving the goal. So in a love story, this is easy to see because if the characters are in conflict, the, the hero and what I call the romance character, the love interest, if they're arguing, it means one of them is in his or her identity and it's stopping them from getting more intimate. If they're both in their essence, they're going to grow closer and become more intimate. That's why the midpoint, that point of no return, re represents a bigger commitment, is oftentimes the first time they make love, because it's physical intimacy that matches the emotional intimacy they have from opening up and showing each other their essence, showing each other their truth. So that arc for the hero is going to correspond to the hero getting closer and closer to the outer motivation. But there's another cool way that they can intertwine and a good tool that you can use as a screenwriter or as a novelist or filmmaker of any kind, even an actor, because this will inform your performance, and that is to look at some other key characters in the story. One is a character I term the reflection. The reflection is my term for the sidekick, for the character who's most closely aligned with the hero. So it might be a best friend, it might be a coworker, it might be a mentor like Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid, or if it's the new Karate Kid, Mr. Han, or Obi-Wan, or uh, uh, just anyone who is there to support the hero, who's aligned with the hero at the beginning of the story. So uh, in Gravity, for example, uh, Ryan, the Sandra Bullock character, is the hero of that movie, but is closely aligned with and supported by the George Clooney character. Now, on the visible journey level, on the plot level, that reflection character is the reflection because their job is to help the hero achieve her visible goal. So in Gravity, what's her visible goal? To get back to Earth. Who's the character who's going to help her do that more than anyone? It's George Clooney's character. I wish I could remember that character's name, but I don't. Okay? But once you have that character functioning as a reflection on the outer journey, now you can see how you use them on the inner journey level. And on the inner journey level, the reflection is the character who reveals the hero's essence to the hero. Or another way to say it is, the reflection is the character who holds the hero's feet to the fire. And any time they're retreating into their identity, the reflection will say, what are you doing? This isn't you. You should be going after that person. Or you can't give up. There are numerous moments in Gravity where the George Clooney character, first as a real person and then as a figment of her imagination, says, you don't want to give up. I know why you want to give up. It's terrible. It's terrifying. But if you can find the courage and you can put one foot in front of the other and keep living your life, that's the way you want to be. And that's a typical scene or situation for a reflection character. Donkey does that for Shrek. Uh, the Vince Vaughn character in Wedding Crashers does it for Owen Wilson. So Owen Wilson has retreated after they broke up into his identity and now he's crashing funerals as well as weddings. And Vince Vaughn goes and says, why are you doing this? You've got to go after her. She's going to get married. She's marrying the wrong guy. You love her. And so that reflection character can intertwine on the inner journey because they're sort of pushing the hero toward their essence. 
And the other character that also becomes a valuable tool if you're writing a love story, which is a great genre, it's a great tool when you want to explore inner, the inner life of the character to add a love story to your plot, whatever the genre is. It's what I call the romance character, the love interest. Because on the visible goal level, if it's a love story, the hero's visible goal has to include winning the love of that other character. They want to end up in a committed relationship with that person. They may do it reluctantly, they may be blind to it at first, but eventually, by the midpoint anyway, they're going to declare their love in some way and they're going to actively pursue that person romantically. But on the inner journey level, the way that works is the, the love interest is the reward for the hero having found the courage to be in his essence. So again, you can't win true love. You can't, you can't win the love of another character if you're living a false life. You have to be in your essence. And so with love stories, the way it works is, if you're writing a love story, to avoid the mistake of having these two people be together just because you want them to be for no logical reason other than they're both good looking and they're the co-stars of the movie. If you wanted to really make logical sense and really have your audience respond to it emotionally, then the romance character is the character who sees beneath the hero's identity and they connect at the level of essence. And so anytime they're in conflict, their identity is coming into play when they actually connect, they're at, essence, they're at the level of essence. And nobody else that the hero has ever fallen for or is involved with or in love with at the beginning of the movie, none of them see the hero's essence. Only the true love can do that. And so now that level of plot is also intertwined with the inner journey as well. Can we talk about, though, a friend who then becomes an enemy or has been an enemy all along or vice versa, someone that we thought was an enemy, an opponent, but was actually more benevolent than we imagined during the beginning of the movie. Yeah, because I use these terms and this jargon I've created like hero, nemesis, romance, reflection, the nemesis is the villain, by the way, or the opponent. Um, because I use those terms, often that question will come up. Well, what if a character starts out as a reflection, a best friend, and turns out to actually be the killer and then become the nemesis? Um, I recommend that a writer not look at it that way. I recommend that you use the terms that you would apply at the end of Act One. How is, the, how is this character established at the beginning, in the beginning act of your script? So if this is the character who's the best friend who's aligned with the hero, then they remain the reflection throughout the movie. They just become a reflection who turns out to be a bad guy or a killer or a murderer or, or a spy or whatever it turns out that they are. And if a character starts out to be a friend, but then this is about the two of them falling in love and we know that's where it's headed, then it's the romance character from the get-go and there might be another best friend to be a reflection and so on. The nemesis who turns out to be a good guy, that can happen as well, but it's done slightly differently. It's not so much that the nemesis has been hiding the fact that he's a good guy as much as he has a change of heart and realizes I'm going after the wrong thing, I gotta help the hero. Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive would be that kind of nemesis. He's in opposition to the hero, but finally he reaches a point where he realizes, I'm going after the wrong guy and I've gotta help him find the truth. So I don't think it's wise to think about characters changing category because it just becomes too complicated and my goal among many others is to make the process as simple as possible. I mean, screenwriting is tough enough without making it more complicated than it is. So I like to use these terms for introducing characters and how they're gonna function overall and not start switching categories.